For those of you who are taking communicative abilities in English 2, the Curso de Nivelación, today is July 21st, 2022, and I want to give you an, a general overview of where we've been, what we've accomplished, and what we need to be focusing on this week as we enter week three. As I've mentioned before, I've moved the entire course over to the virtual classroom so that you should be able to find now all of the course content and also a space where you can upload all of your assignments. Okay, this is where you can also access your grades. So if you haven't done so already, make sure that you've entered into the virtual classroom. It's called CAE2 Curso de Nivelación. And make sure if you haven't already to upload the assignments. Okay, so as you are familiar with, uh, you should be able to see under each corresponding week the assignments. So we have here semi-structured interview one, Flipgrid presentation one under week one, and so on. One thing before we get into um, the, the academic essay, this is going to be our main topic for today in our face-to-face -face session. But if you haven't already done so, make sure you've uploaded the assignments here to the classroom. One thing I want to mention, I want you to take a look at your videos that you created and pay very close attention to the instructions for the interview. Okay, we have really two parts to this to this activity for week one is first the interview and then the presentation of Flipgrid. They're related, but they are different. How are they different? Well, when you go into the instructions, always make sure you're reading through each and that you understand the goals for the semi-structured interview. For most of you, you've already completed it, but when you're assessing your own work, when you go back and listen to your own essay, make sure that you are paying very close attention to the standards that I've listed here. The interview, the idea of the interview is to ask follow-up questions. Okay, we can go through each one of these, but the point with the interview is not to bring up your opinion about the topic. It's mainly to ask questions and follow-up questions, more importantly, to try to find out what the interviewee, the person you're interviewing, what he or she feels about the particular topic. Through asking the questions, you are revealing your understanding of the of the topic that you chose. Point number seven here reads, the interview should demonstrate a level of understanding about the chosen issue of the day. You are demonstrating your level of understanding through the questions that you've asked. Not that you are stating that you are even agreeing or disagreeing with the interviewee. You should not agree or disagree with the interviewee. Your sole objective in the interview is to find out what he or she believes, feels, share maybe some experiences, but from the perspective of the interviewee, not you, the interviewer, if that makes sense. Now, when you go into the Flipgrid activity, now you can share two aspects. You can share information that you gathered from the interview, and you can offer your own opinion. Again, you're offering your opinion you're going to offer your opinion in the Flipgrid presentation as it relates to the questions that you ask and the information that you got from the interview. In the interview itself, you are not offering your own opinion. You're not going to agree or disagree. Okay, It, it should be conversational, but only in the sense that you are offering questions. You're basically trying to get as much information from the interview is possible. You don't want to spend any time uh, offering your own opinion because that takes away from asking follow-up questions, right? That uh, offer you know more information from the interviewee. Okay. So when you're looking at your own performance, this is what I'm going to be looking at. I'll be uploading grades to the interviews uh, that you have completed, but I'm going to ask first again if you haven't done so already to please upload your assignments. In the case of the interviews, you can just share the link, the URL to the video or the Flipgrid video, whatever the case may be. 
and uh, that'll, that'll be fine. Okay, so today we're going to be focusing on the academic essay. We typically begin with talking about different ways of narrowing down our research topic and also the thesis statement. This is going to be our topic or our, uh, our main point that we want to discuss today is to find strategies to try to narrow down our topic and really develop a good thesis statement. I think it's worth reviewing the five parts of a thesis statement as we've talked about in all of the four essays in the last two semesters we've really followed the same approach in trying to develop a thesis statement so you're going to be offering a an argumentative essay trying to include first a thesis statement that's going to represent the main idea of your essay make sure you start with a transition remember that the thesis statement ultimately will appear at the last or at the end of your introduction paragraph so the transition is a way to bridge or connect the problem that you're going to develop later on in your introduction paragraph with essentially the answer to that problem in the form of a thesis statement. So remember transitions can be introductory phrases, they can be subordinating clauses, they can be sentence connectors. Those are typically the three main types of or forms of transitions that we can introduce or that we can use to begin our thesis statement. We'll typically have a comma at the end of the transition and then follow that up with a topic. A topic is going to essentially be the subject of your thesis statement. The opinion is going to be the verb phrase, the position, the main claim. Okay, this is going to be your position for your, think of it as a side. You're, if, if it's a debate, you're going to choose a side, whether you are for cell phones in the class, for example, or you are against cell phones in the class. This is going to be your position. This is what you're going to be talking throughout the entire essay about. You're going to choose one. You're going to offer different positions throughout as you get more specific in the body paragraphs, but this is at the level of the whole essay. Remember that the thesis statement is one sentence that represents the main idea of your entire essay. So this is where we're going to introduce that opinion or that claim or that position. Then we're going to have some kind of connector. Now the connector is important because it's going to depend on if you're asking or answering a how question or a why question. Those are typically the main types of questions that we're going to be answering. Now remember that when we write an essay essentially we are setting out to answer one central question. So the connector, if we're going to use the connector because, we're typically going to answer the question why. The connector because is going to introduce usually reasons. Because of this reason, because of this reason, and because of this reason. If you're answering the question how, then typically we use a connector or the preposition by. Okay, so the answering the question how usually discusses ways. This is one way, by doing this, by doing this, by doing this. These are three different ways that this uh, you know, can happen or whatever. So be very careful with the type of connector that you're going to use and remember that if you're going to use a connector here to connect the opinion and the five points, you probably don't want to use the same word because as a preposition, I'm sorry, as a subordinating clause uh, to begin a transition. Try to find a different way to transition so that you're not repeating the word because. Finally, the transition, I'm sorry, finally the, uh, the last thing we want to include in the thesis statement are the key points. So remember if we're talking about reasons, we're going to list out reason number one, reason number two, reason number three. If we're going to state why or how something happens, this is one way of this can happen, this is another way, and this is a third way. Those key points can technically be in the form of a single word or phrase or a clause. Just be consistent. So if you're going to use a clause in the first key point, then be consistent and state a clause in all three points. Same way with a clause or a single word. Now if we need to look at examples in class we can talk about that. 
for the most part, most of you are using clauses, and for the most part, that's probably the best way to state the key point in the form of a clause. A clause simply has a subject and a verb phrase. All right, so this is what we're going to be looking at. This is what I'll be looking at as I look at your thesis statements today in class. At this point, as we're in week three, we need to have completed really the thesis statement at least one version of a thesis statement and now our outline. So we need to be able to list out the three topic sentences that are going to correspond with the three key points that we listed in the thesis statement. If you have something that uh, you uh, have completed, go ahead and upload it either to the virtual classroom or if you want to discuss it first today in class and then upload it to uh, the virtual classroom, that's fine as well. All right, so uh, we'll, I'll end there. If you have any questions, of course, reach out to me via Microsoft Teams or, of course, take advantage of our class time today to, uh, to uh, go in or dig into your questions. Okay, so we'll see everybody uh, in class.